Here we are back with another example to keep you sharp, all right? Now, I always suggest pausing, trying to solve the problem on your own, and then verifying for the solution, or if you got it wrong, seeing the correct solution. So here we go, we got this contraption here, and it's basically saying we got a force P pulling down on the rigid member ABC, and then we got this brass link, and then this aluminum link. And we're given the details of the brass here, the modulus of elasticity in the area, and then the aluminum as well. And we're asked to determine the maximum force P that can be applied if the deflection at A is not to exceed 0 0.35 millimeters. So as you guessed it, first thing we got to do is draw a free body diagram right here of the rigid member ABC. Okay, so at point A, we got our force P pulling down. At point B, we got the force F B pulling up and then at point C we got FC pulling down and we'll label all the lengths between these forces while we're at it. Next we're going to sum moments about C because this rigid link ain't moving and so that gives us 350 P equal to 225 FB. So we can isolate FB and solve for it in terms of P and we got 1.556 P. Can do the same thing summing all the moments about b and then uh, we end up with similar fc equals 0 0.556 p so both in terms of p next we got to figure out our deformations so the deformation at b is equal to the total elongation of this brass link bc so we know that the deformation equation axial deformation is fl over ae so we'll use FB, LBC, ABC, and E brass to figure that out. So we'll plug everything in here. Oh, my bad, it's not BC. We're actually talking about BD here, the brass link. Okay, plugging in 1.556P, 225 millimeters, divided by 240 millimeters squared, and the 105 MPA gives you 13.9 times 10 to the negative 6 p so it's it's quite a small number 10 to the negative 6 i use the e notation for that so next we'll we'll do the same thing for uh, point c so the deformation at point c is equal to the elongation of the aluminum link ce so we'll use all the aluminum properties we won't rewrite the the fl over ae but i'll just start plugging things in here so i got the 0.556 p then we got the area of this, which were, sorry, then we got the length, which is 150 millimeters, all divided by the area, 300 millimeters squared. And then this time it's the modulus of elasticity of the aluminum, which is 72,000 megapascals. Okay, so plugging all that in, it gives us 3.858 times 10 to the negative 6 P. So that is the deflection at point C. Okay, so next step, getting near to the end here, guys, the deflection diagram. So this is where we draw out the rigid link here, ABC, and we kind of draw the different deflection points. We know that the actual member ABC will stay in a straight line. So we're kind of going to draw a straight line here, and then we're going to label. So we got the deflection at A, the deflection at B, and the deflection at point C. And there's a straight line between them, and we're gonna do some trigonomic magic right about here. So we're gonna label this angle here in red, theta, which is the same as the angle on the other side, if you remember your trig rules. And then we're gonna draw this, uh, this blue line across, and we're gonna make use here of the fact that we can, we can label the third angle theta from the Z rule in trigonometry. And we're, we're gonna look at this triangle formed from, from the blue bottom and then um, all the way up. So here on the right side, the right side of this triangle is the deflection at C plus the deflection at B. And we're gonna make use of small angle theorem. So small angle theorem says that the sine of a small angle is equal to that small angle. So we can say that theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. So the, the delta C 
plus the delta B divided by this length right here. And that's the length from B to C, which we look up in the figure. It's 225 millimeters. Now to get delta C and delta B, we just look at these highlighted values we calculated earlier, plug them in. So we get 78.87 times 10 to the negative 9 P. I'll let you solve that if, you're, if you want to double check my work. I do make a fair amount of mistakes, to be honest. Check out the comments when that happens. So uh, finally, last, last part here is that we got to look at this green triangle I've drawn. So the green triangle, we're going to um, rewrite this equation with theta. And now notice that the, the, I'll label it in red. Notice that this angle in the green triangle is again theta using trig rules. So we can write a similar statement here where theta is equal to delta A minus delta B all divided by the distance between A and B, which is 125 millimeters. Then we can isolate delta A because that's uh, really what we're after. We can uh, rewrite it. Delta A is equal to delta B plus 125 times theta. And we solve for it, we get 23.75 times 10 to the negative 9 P. So at this point, we have uh, delta A in terms of P, but we have the last step here, which is to compare this with the, the maximum value that we're given of 0 0.35 millimeters. We're told, we're told point A can't move down more than that. So if delta A equals 0 0.35 millimeters, setting that equal to what we solved for, we can isolate P and we get P equal to 14.74 kilonewtons. And there's our final answer. So we'll, we'll put it in royal purple. That's the color of royalty, you know, it's, it's worthy of the answer. Okay, so I hope that's what you got when you paused the video at the beginning. I trust you did that. And uh, yeah, just keep plugging away. Keep ingraining this into your mind.